Hello everyone, welcome to BISP Solutions. I'm Tanvi Arora and I'm working here as a functional consultant. So in today's video, we are going to see the consolidation case with CTA, that is my currency translation account and with non-controlling interest, that is my minority interest with the effect of historical override. So let's just go to the Excel sheet that I have prepared. This is the Excel sheet that I have prepared. This is my holding company and this is my subsidiary company. My holding company that is S101 has made an invest 80% investment in my subsidiary company that is S102. And after consolidation, this investment will get eliminated. And this investment amounts to 2 lakh rupees. Here I have shown it. So... My, if I see my individual financial statements, so my holding company is preparing its individual financial statements in their respective base currency. And my uh, similarly, my uh, subsidiary company is preparing its financial statements in its own respective base currency. But after consolidation, we want the figures in reporting currency, that is my USD, uh, of the currency of my holding company. I For that, I need some conversion rates, okay? I have already defined my conversion rates here. I have taken any rates uh, like random rates, but these are actually defined. Uh, this is average rate. So what is average rate? It is an average over a period of time. Like my month is January. I'm doing the consolidation for the month of January. So uh, from 1st of January to 31st of January and then average of that period. So that will be my average rate. Then this is my ending rate, which is the last day of my month. It is also called closing rate. And this is historical rate. And uh, what is historical rate? It is the rate usually uh, used for common stock calculation of subsidiary. Now, this is the rate which was prevailing on the date the particular transaction has taken place. Okay. So this is my historical rate on which a particular transaction is happening or the transaction has taken place. And in our case, the transaction is acquisition of common stock, that is investment, holding company's investment in subsidiary company, okay? Um, the assets and the liability items as per IAS 21 are always converted uh, using the ending rate. The PNL items are always converted using the average rate. And the common stock of subsidy, that is my share capital, gets converted at the historical rate. So for this, there is a particular form uh, in our application in which we have to input the amount or the exchange rates to see the effect of historical override amount. Okay. And if we don't input this override amount for this historical rate, what will happen? It will take the average rate for the common stock of subsidy. So this common stock of subsidy will get converted at the average rate, which will not give us the correct picture. Now, if I'm taking different different rates for conversion, like I'm converting my PNL items at the average rate and my balance sheet items at the ending rate, so there will be a difference basically either on the asset side or on the liability side. So that difference, uh, like my asset side will be more uh, if it is more. So this we will go to currency translation account and uh, this is I'm getting it because of the currency exchange rates. Okay, the difference basically. So uh, to tally my balance sheet, the difference, uh, the liability side was bigger and the asset side was smaller. So I've just put it as minus 7400. This was the difference. And uh, this is called currency translation account. This difference will go here. Now, if we say about the goodwill calculation, what is my uh, goodwill? It is the in total investment made by holding in the subsidiary. So my investment is 2 lakh rupees. And I have to deduct the uh, net assets of the subsidiary, basically. So which comes to 1,50,000. Now, how it is coming? This is the converted amount of share capital of the subsidiary. That is 1,87,500 in which holding has 80% of share. Okay. So I have done that uh, like 1,87,500 into 80%, which comes to 1,50,000. And my goodwill will come to 50,000, which we will verify later. 
from the output sheet. Now the calculation of minority interest is what is minority interest whatever uh, their share is there in the common stock basically okay so in the common stock uh, the converted common stock i have taken of the subsidiary this is 1,87,500 and uh, so this is uh, the uh, one lakh eighty seven thousand five hundred in which minority people have twenty percent interest. So uh, they have twenty percent of share basically, and which comes to thirty seven thousand five hundred. And also they have share in the retained earnings or the profit basically. So these are my retained earnings, and the converted retained earnings are five nine zero zero in which they have twenty percent share, and which comes to total as thirty eight thousand six hundred and eighty. Now. I have to calculate uh, separately the calculation of the retained earnings also. So how this is coming? Basically, after consolidation, the retained earnings of the holding will get combined with the retained earnings of the subsidiary. So the uh, retained earnings of the holding is 20,000, which I have picked from here. And in the converted uh, share, like this 5900, they have 80% uh, of share the holding persons so the total retained earning will amount to 24720 okay and whatever investment they have made will ultimately get eliminated okay so we'll see uh, this uh, calculation of cta what we have done whether it, uh, we are verifying this from our uh, after running the consolidation rule so the next step is to go to the application and uh, we will define the currency exchange rates in the data form also the override amounts and then we will define our ownership structure and then run the business rule of consolidation. So this is the home. This is the home page of my application. So first of all, I will define my correct ownership structure. Under application, I will go to consolidation. And I will uh, select my correct POV. I'll define it. So my entity is total S100. Then my scenario, I've taken it as plan only. Year is fine. Period is January. Okay. Here I have to click on this run button. Then uh, see South 101 is my holding company, uh, which has 100% ownership. And South 102 is my subsidiary company. So I've defined 80% here. And this I have defined it as subsidiary. So you can see that uh, the application has automatically calculated the minority part. Okay, after defining this, we just have to save the changes. And then after this, we'll recompute the ownership data. From actions, I will click on recompute ownership data. So my POV is correct here. I'll just recompute it. So once this is done, uh, the next step is to uh, put the exchange rates in the data form. So from navigator under dashboards, I will go to data. So under this data, we have different, different forms basically for inputting the exchange rates. We will use this enter exchange rate single period. Now, as per my Excel sheet, Yeah. So as per my Excel sheet, we know that one USD is equal to uh, the average rate I'm talking about is equal to 1.18 Canadian dollars and one USD equal to 1.2 Canadian dollars. This is my ending rate. So same I'm going to provide in my application. And uh, for USD, I'm just giving it a direct quotation. So I've already provided one and one here uh, in the USD for average and ending rate. And then I'll just directly go to Canadian currency and provide my average rate and ending rate and save this data form. And uh, also I will check that POV is fine or not. Okay. First of all, this is the prior step. Basically, this is all fine. This form has been saved. Now, again, I have to input the override amounts also. So we will use separate data form for that, which is called override input data form. Okay. Override input data form. So this is 
so we'll click on this and first of all i have to check my uh, povs whether my povs are correctly defined or not so uh, scenario i have taken it as plan only year is financial year 2015 entity i will define it correctly okay so it's in total geography and their total geography uh, this is total s100 okay so i've selected my correct entity uh, the changes have not been saved wait So else we can put it in uh, this uh, headquarter only. It covers all the entities. Then uh, I have to change the movement. So movement is uh, changes due to issue of stock. So I'll just select this changes due to issue of stock. And data source is my data input. Intercompany I'm not taking. Multi gap is no multi gap. Product no product. Rest everything is fine. And C. I have inputted the amount already in this. I'll explain from where this is coming. So in my Excel sheet, if you can see, yeah, okay. So in my Excel sheet, as you can see, uh, that from uh, this. One lakh eighty-seven thousand five hundred. This is at the USD level. This is uh, share capital of subsidy is getting converted uh, using the override rate, and this comes to one lakh eighty-seven thousand five hundred, which is uh, which is at USD level, and this is at my Canadian level. So I'll just input these two amounts respectively in my application. Okay, so at USD level, I have inputted this amount. And at the Canadian dollar level, I have put it one lakh fifty thousand, and then I'll just save this. Okay. So I think this has been saved. Yeah, it has been saved, and then uh, the next step is to run the business rule of consolidation. If everything is fine, we have defined everything, and let's see the result. Under the rules, we'll click on this consolidate rule and we'll launch this rule. Here, I have to select my correct entity. My correct entity is under total geography, which is total S hundred. Okay, and I will remove this total geography, and I'll just click on OK. And my period is January. And uh, scenario is plan, so I'll just change it. Uh, this is plan. I'll click on OK. Financial year is two thousand fifteen. I'll just launch this. Okay. So once this uh, rule is launched, the effect of consolidation will take place, and we'll verify the figures at the uh, Excel sheet in my Smart View. So let's go to our Excel sheet and see the results. So this is my output sheet. And as you can see, the amount of goodwill that is uh, coming is 50,000. Okay. And I've taken uh, it at elimination level also. And uh, we can see at the top level also. So it is coming as 50,000, which is getting tallied with my Excel sheet. What? Uh, with which we have calculated earlier. Then if I uh, see the next item, that is my common stock. So if I go to my Excel sheet, common stock will, after consolidation, will only be considered uh, for the holding company, not for the subsidiary company. Okay, this will get eliminated. So uh, only the common stock of subs uh, holding company will be shown at the um, consolidated level. And similarly, we can verify this figure from this, and you can see that one lakh eighty-seven thousand five hundred is getting eliminated. And uh, if we see the individual assets and uh, liabilities account amount also, so if we total this, it is coming to two lakh eighty-three thousand, 
then uh, we can verify this from our Excel sheet as well. Two lakh eighty three thousand, three lakh eighty seven thousand is for the bank, which is correct. Liabilities is also correct. Creditors are uh, one lakh sixty four thousand, and uh, at the uh, consolidated level, after consolidation, it will it the same actually. Then my retained earnings are coming as twenty six thousand two hundred, but as per my Excel sheet. My retained earnings are twenty four thousand seven twenty. Now there is a difference of one four eight zero in this. Okay, so actually my actual according to my output sheet it is twenty six thousand two hundred, but actual it is twenty four thousand seven twenty. So why uh, this is uh, like more, uh, and uh, I will tell you the other side of this. Now let's verify the minority interest first. My minority interest should be thirty seven thousand two hundred. As and as per my Excel sheet, it is thirty eight thousand six eighty. Okay, so if I see this at uh, my minority level, uh, minority interest level, and my retained earning income level, okay, this is my owner's income and this is my minority interest income, and the movement of these members are total effect from foreign exchange. So basically, this is some uh, foreign exchange difference only. And this is not CTA. CTA, uh, we are getting already, which is getting tallied. That is minus seven four zero zero, which is getting tallied. Like, wait. So my CTA, that is minus seven four zero zero, is already getting tallied with this amount. We can see that. Okay. But here the difference that is one four eight zero. Uh, it is uh, adding up in my retained earning. It is going in my profit. Okay, adding up in my profit, and this minus one four eight zero. It is uh, deducting from my minority interest income, which ultimately will give me a, a nil figure that is becoming zero. And also, if we see my minority interest is thirty seven thousand two hundred, and uh, this minus one four eight zero should not get deducted from it. So if I add back this amount again in my thirty seven thousand two hundred, it will come to my correct figure that is thirty eight thousand six eighty. Okay, I'll show you thirty seven thousand two hundred plus one four eight zero is this amount only. Okay, and for my retained earnings. This one four eight zero, it is getting added up, and if we deduct from our retained earning figure, it will give a true picture to us, which will come to twenty four seven twenty. So basically, this uh, effect is getting nullified, but this is due to some uh, error in the uh, application only. Okay, this is the uh, like running of the business rule. Something is going behind. This is not actually the correct treatment. The correct uh, figure should have been reflected, and this only happens with the uh, calculation of non. Controlling interest. If I do the hundred percent consolidation, this issue will not arise. And for this issue, we have already raised a query in uh, Oracle Forum, so we are awaiting their response for this. Okay, and uh, you can see this that the uh, investment in subsidiary uh, of two lakh it got nullified. Okay, so um, it got eliminated, and the result we got is zero. Okay. So this was the effect of it and thank you so much.